Hi everyone. In the previous episode, I mentioned an abrupt change in plans, and that is indeed the case. We are visiting friends Scott and Vicki, and we are at their home in California. And part of the reason for the change in our plans was because of the batteries. When we bought the boat, the batteries were already old, and when we inspected them, they were dry. We added the water and charged them, and six of them came back up but not all the way. So we've been using them knowing that one day we would have to replace them. I think that day has come as we don't think they'll survive the summer. So when we came to that realization, around the same time, an opportunity presented uh, itself to go visit our friends, John and Christy. Um, I think you met them in episode 34, 33, I'll look it up. Uh, but they live in an off-the-grid home in Kodiak, Alaska. And we've always been intrigued with the idea of living off the grid. And right now, Alaska's nice and cool. Mm -hmm. A lot cooler than <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baja California. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about heat, during the summer months, we slept out in the cockpit where it was cooler and we could enjoy the stars. It was much to the delight of Blondie. On our Baja trip, we bashed our way south from Cala Mujeres to Santa Rosalia. We were charmed with Santa Rosalia and spent several days there reconnecting with our friends Tony and Diane from Dolce. Santa Rosalia is a former French mining town and unusual for desert construction. Most of the homes and businesses are constructed from lumber that was backhauled by the ships that transported copper produced at Santa Rosalia. It would have been very easy for us to spend a couple of weeks exploring and enjoying the slower pace of life. The heat was more of a factor for us there than the cooler temperatures we had enjoyed further north where the water temperature was lower. We plan on returning later this year when the weather is more temperate to do a lot more walking and learning of Santa Rosalia's history. This trip we visited the famous bakery for French bread and just enjoyed the ambiance of the town. Here, I found an unusual street planting, cotton bushes. All too soon, it was time to make our passage across to San Carlos. We stayed in San Carlos long enough to spend time with Nick and Ika and go for a sail on their boat, a Hans Christian 38. They too have spent a lot of time in the yard and it was great to be with them and to see them enjoy some time on the water. After three nights in San Carlos, we spent a night at El Mero, where at sunrise it was 93 degrees in the cabin. It was so much hotter in Sonora than on the Baja side. We removed the mainsail and the Genoa and loaded them into the truck along with my sewing machine. Then it was time to get back to the yard for our haul out. We were pleased that we were bringing the boat back with no major problems, that by and large everything had gone well. We were looking forward to our trip to Alaska. However, at the same time, we were sad to be coming off the water and to be leaving our home. It was a bittersweet time for us. We spent three days in the yard packing up La Brisa. From other cruisers, we heard about the trick of running sacrificial lines up the mast to preserve the halyards from sun damage. 
We are trying this out using line purchased from the Fisherman's Co-op, also recommended. We are leaving one regular halyard in place just in case we have to go up the mast if there is a problem with the sacrificial lines. Lines were washed and dried, bags packed, and the kayak and outboard stored down below before we headed north. Our boat work didn't stop there. We brought projects with us and we started by washing our main and Genoa. We learned it would be easier to do this chore on the boat by hoisting the sails as we washed. We examined the sails and repairs were made. The leech on our main was wearing through in places. There were previous repairs made to this area by the previous owners using sticky sail repair tape. I cut wider sailcloth strips to cover and reinforce the area. I also made sure the bottom edge overlapped the top edge so in the event of leech flutter, the mains sailcloth wouldn't wear through as easily. The Genoa only needed stitching on the sacrificial cover where some of the stitching had rotted from sun exposure. As you can see, all of the crew pitched in. There are still more sewing projects to be done, a new zipper on the Dodger, and repairs to the cockpit awning. That will have to wait until our return. Our flight leaves tonight for Alaska. We will be gone until late September, and I hope to shoot footage from the trip and share what it is like to live off the grid. So until then, 